Hello and welcome to another Atypical Philosopher video with myself, Jonathan M.S. Pierce. Today I'm going to talk to you about philosophy of religion and psychology of religion as well. I'll be referring to an article by my writing colleague, Will Gervais, uh, who, who writes at Only Sky now as well. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the idea that many atheists have that atheism is correlated particularly with or and therefore in some sense cause, causally related to rationality and that the atheists are more rational and people who are religious are more intuitive and uh, you know there is there is that connection if you're more scientific you're, you're going to end up being more atheistic I'm going to look at some of the the data that may or may not support that uh, and and an article by Will Gervais that that, that says actually that ain't so true and then I'll add my own nuances to that at the end. But I'm going to work through his article, if you don't mind, uh, and we can sort of look at this together and then I'll comment it on it as we go. So the, the article is called The Treasured Atheist Idea That Reason Undercuts Faith. And he says it just doesn't hold up. Um, so he, as, as a writer, as a, uh, as a scientist, a psychologist of religion, he, he wrote a paper back in 20, 2012 Um so, uh, you know, I'm a scientist who's been studying the psychology of atheism for more than 15 years, and I think the new atheists and others who suggest a strong and direct causal connection between rationality and atheism have got the science wrong. Rationality is not generally corrosive to faith, and the sparse scientific evidence trumpeted by those who link atheism and rationality is itself quite uncertain. As we scientists have come to better understand atheism over the years, we've learned that the relationship between rationality and atheism is far more complex than we had once assumed. Buckle up while we unpack a twisting scientific story. So, as I was saying, like he, he back in... Um, uh, well, here, here he says, around 2010, towards the tail end of my graduate school career, Aaron Nuren Zayan, so he's written a couple of papers with him, and I decided to scientifically test whether rational thinking was a pillar to atheism. Specifically, we wanted to test two possibilities. First, that individual differences in rational thinking would predict atheism. And second, that experimental nudges to think more rationally would promote atheism. We published a paper in Science that seemed to show support for both possibilities. One study revealed a correlation whereby people scoring higher on a standard test for of rationality over intuition also rated themselves as less religious than more intuitive thinkers. Four follow-up studies found that various experimental nudges to engage the rational system led people to report less religious belief. Our results were joined by similar results published in two by two independent teams. So their work attracted quite a lot of attention. A lot of people used this. People like Peter Bogosian, who wrote to, who wrote a manual for creating atheists, used that um, in his advocacy for street epistemology, uh, talking about how you know you should be you know if you're more rational, you're more likely to be atheist. So you know you need to approach these things really rationally and try and convince people rationally, so on and so forth. And uh, their paper at the time was quite celebrated and got quite a lot of critical attention. Um, and then in 20... So, you know, what uh, Will Gervais is saying now is different to what he was saying in that paper back in 2010, 2012. So in 2017, Clinton Sanchez and Bob Kalin Jagerman, uh, along with their colleagues, published a solid good faith e effort to replicate our 2012 finding. Their project was much more methodically rigorous, so Gervais admits this, than our initial effort. The samples were larger, the techniques were more finely tuned, and our net results and their results were negative contrary to our initial claims. Experimental nudges to think rationally had precisely zero effect on self-reported religious beliefs. A 2018 paper attempted replications of all social science papers published in Science and Nature over a span of time. And this paper, too, was unable to replicate our 2012 results. This was uh, uh, during that period, I think, of that, that controversy about replication of psycholo psychological um, uh, papers and investigations, experiments, um, along with a large number of other prominent findings. So Nuren Zion and I faced the music and publicly disavowed our findings. This is great. This is what scientists should do. It's what people don't like doing. But they said, yeah, we were wrong. And that that's that's brilliant. You know, the data has come along to convince us that we were not correct in our position. It looks increasingly like our results were a false positive. Noise that we had mistakenly assumed was an exciting signal. Okay, just to talk about false positives, there's something in um, 
particularly in psychology, this happens actually, uh, and well, and also drug um, drug testing is called the publication bias or the file drawer drawer effect, and this is when you produce a a study an experiment that has it finds null findings right null results in other words you test does a affect b and you find that a doesn't affect b and rather than publish that you think oh it's, it's produced no result you don't publish it but actually null results are really important null results tell you something still it's like that doesn't affect that and if you do that again and again and it doesn't affect that then we can say with some confidence that a doesn't cause b right so null effects are super important. What you have sometimes is, is an anomaly. So you might do a, a piece of, of data research and find an effect. And you say, well, I've, A, it look, I've done, does A cause B? I've found some results where it looks like A causes B. But it could be a correlation, right? It could be, you know, there was A and there was also B and it was something else that was causing it. Or it could have just been a statistical anomaly. So if if like I um you know I don't know I I do something 10 times in a row and and only one time in that 10 I'll I'll get this particular result most times that result doesn't happen when it does happen it's a it's a fluke right so it, when you do scientific papers uh, or experiments and you and you get some results what what's the chance that it's just that one in 10 or one in 100 or one in 50 or one in six times that you just get that fluke result and unless you do that time and time again it's difficult to show just on doing it once that 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 the a does cause b in this case right so it could be that uh, gervais and neuron zion here have done this piece of of work and have have got results that look like they support a causes b but actually, it's just your one in 10 fluke. And what you need to do is another nine experiments of the, the same experiment replication to show that that happens again and again. And if you don't, then you can't replicate your data. It means that actually that was an anomaly. They just did that one, of course. And they did have some other bits of, of data to support their position. But then other people tried to replicate it and they couldn't get that data. And so actually, it was like a false positive. Now, this happens an awful lot when doing drugs. Uh, not when doing drugs, when, when experimenting with drugs, and I don't mean it like that either. When when a, a drugs company says, "Right, we we will um, see whether giving people this drug makes people better for X," right? So you're going to give them drug A, and it, will it make them better for X? And they might do four experiments. Three of them, three of them don't show any results. They're null results. But one of them shows a result because they want to sell this drug. They will take the one result that does show a, show um, efficacy of this drug, and they will put the other three in a file drawer. It is the file drawer effect? They they won't produce the null results, and they will produce. They will they will talk about the paper that, that produces the results, and so therefore people pick up that drug. That drug will get used, but actually it's not very effective. That drug because it doesn't work because actually that that statistic was an anomaly and three out of four times you know it shows no no results and that's a file drawer effect so no results are super super important and you shouldn't just file them away you should publish them and talk about them and but you talk about them by replicate you know about them by replicating that experiment um to show that it was indeed a null result or 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 it was it gave you a result but it was uh, a false positive Right, so in this case, it wasn't a null result. It showed you something. This is what uh, Nuremberg and Gervais did. They 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 showed a causal connection between these two phenomena, um, but actually, it was an anomaly. Right, compounding matters. Uh, a team led by Miguel Farias tried experiments pushing in the other direction, asking whether nudges to go with the gut and trust intuitions would increase belief. Also, turned up a whole lot of nothing, which is in important. So. That's to say that someone tried to test whether intuition leads to religion, and uh, that you know that showed no results, and that null result is is super important. Whatever the links between rationality and religion, it wasn't something we could easily push around in the lab. 
So experiments linking rationality to atheism and intuition to faith don't hold didn't hold scientific water. But what about individual differences? After all, our paper and two independent teams had all nearly simultaneously found that rational thinking was at, uh, at least correlated with atheism. This pattern, with the grit of hindsight and now decades worth of research, does appear to be legit. Um, Gord Pennycook conducted a meta-analysis to synthesize all available evidence on the correlation between rational thinking and atheism and reported that overall the correlation was robust. Doesn't this partially salvage the idea of rational atheism? After all, here's large-scale evidence that in sample after sample, rational thinkers tend to be a bit less religious than folks who rely on their gut intuitions more heavily. So, rationality and atheism, a weak and fickle correlation. Pennicutt's meta-analysis found a correlation of only about R equals 0.2. Um, so this is how you measure correlations uh, between rational thinking and, and irreligion. This means we, we, if we know people's scores on the test of rational thinking, we can only account for about 4% of the variability in belief in God. So actually the effect is pretty minimal. Not nothing, but also not that impressive. The correlation between rationality and atheism also looks to be quite fickle across cultural contexts. I had a team to look at rational atheism in 13 countries um, in places like the USA, uh, really, uh, the correlation is reliable without being strong, but it appears entirely, it disappears entirely in other parts of the world. We found that the modest correlation between rationality and atheism disappeared pretty much entirely in more secular European samples and was weaker in most places than it appears in the USA. Okay, this is almost certainly to do with the norms, right? When atheism becomes a norm, it's like Christianity in in um, America, right, in the USA. Christianity is a norm, so most people like end up believing that just because you're kind of born and brought up, you're not really thinking rationally, you're not really thinking by gut or anything, it's just what you're born into. In the same way, in Sweden and Finland maybe, and Norway, these more secular countries in Denmark, you're born and brought up into a norm of secularism, right, a norm of irreligion and so therefore you, it's not something you rationally come to it's not something you've intuitively come to it's just like you know that that's that's what i was taught that's how it's brought up and so therefore this kind of uh, look, looking at the data in this way is really important because it then it shows you that actually it depends on the context for, you know to some great degree um Averaging across all 13 countries, we found a measly correlation of R equals 0.1 between rationality and atheism, meaning that in this global analysis, rationality is only accounting for about 1% of the observed variable in religious beliefs. Clearly, other factors are a lot more important here. Another research project enabled us to test a very specific dynamic hinted but at by the new atheist, the possibility that rationality might be specifically impactful for prying people away from strongly religious beliefs upbringings. Maybe rationality isn't generally corrosive to religion, as a previously mentioned analysis suggests, but might be a key factor in atheism among people who were strongly raised to be religious. And uh, a bunch of people tested various factors of atheism against each other in a nationally representative sample of US Americans. We were able to conduct a statistical analysis to specifically pinpoint the relationship between rationality and atheism among those who were most strongly exposed to religion while they were growing up. Uh, and among these people most culturally brought up to be religious, the correlation between rationality and religious disbelief dropped to zero. That's right. Among those folks with the most exposure to religion, there's no reliable correlation between rationality and atheism. This means that among those with strong um, religious upbringings, the ones who are most rational are no more likely to end up as atheists than are those who are most inclined to trust their intuitions. Far from rationality being a key factor that leads people away from strongly uh, religious upbringings and towards atheism, it turns out that rationality isn't even modestly correlated with atheism among this subset of people. There was no relation whatsoever. And, uh, so what 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 does this mean then? What does this mean about this this popular notion of atheism and rationality? Um, 
are all the people uh, at atheist meetups who tell me their rational journey to atheism, were they simply self-deluded? No, not at all, says Gervais. To an individual person who left religion, rationality can seem like the most important factor. But in aggregate, looking across the entire population of everyone who was raised in religious home and who tries to apply rationality in their life, there's no general trend whereby rationality leads people to atheism. So there could be this subset of people who are arguing vociferously on life. Uh, about how they came to their atheism from a religious background and and it was a product of a a really like rational journey and a rational analysis of the claims but but they are not representative of of the general trends here um you know the so here people's individual narratives aren't invalid they just can't speak to broader trends the atheist groups i talk to might genuinely be made up of people who used rationality to go atheist it's just that these groups won't include all the people with similar upbringings who use rationality to explore and strengthen their faith so new atheist trumpet Uh, rationality as an antidote to faith, yet they fail to engage with a now substantial body of scientific evidence that flatly flatly contradicts their core premise. Experiments causally linking atheism and rationality have failed to replicate and been denounced by their authors, including me. Uh, The correlation between rational thinking and atheism appears robust, if somewhat unimpressive in magnitude. Sure, folks who score a bit higher on a task measuring rationality also tend to rate themselves a bit less religious, but this correlation is small in magnitude, fickled across uh, cultural context and disappears entirely among people strongly exposed to religion while growing up. On each of those points, scientific evidence stubbornly fails to align with the new world atheists that the world the world that they describe, a world in which rationality leaves even kids um, raised in fundamentalist families to atheism. Uh, so uh, atheist freethinkers and skeptics typically embrace science. We trust science in part because we trust scientists to stay up to date on the relevant evidence. The four horsemen, Christopher Hitchens, pithily summarizes uh, in The Four Horsemen, he pithily summarizes this defense, deference to scientific authorities by quoting, by saying, I'll take things that Dennett and Dawkins say on the natural sciences, knowing that Dennett and Dawkins are the sorts of gentlemen who would have checked. Yet for more than a decade, public atheists have failed to engage with the science on one of the most treasured assumptions, the rational, that rationality can lead people away from religion and towards atheism. The evidence has been has never been strongly supportive of rationality as a key underpinning of atheism. And now, after we've had more than a decade of direct study, it looks like rationality is at best a minor thread in the tapestry of atheism rather than a central theme. Rational atheism is more or less a myth. Um, so that's not to say you shouldn't promote rationality. Of course you, you do. And he goes on to talk about that. You know, in a world full of the problems we have, rationality is massively important to solving those problems. But it's just that, you know, what causes atheism? Uh, is it rationality? Well, arguably, not particularly. And it, it does say down here as a, as a footnote, uh, one important caveat to all this, most of these studies relied on the same measure of rational thinking. It's, u- it's a useful measure, but far from perfect. Other measures, those that ask people to subject Actively rate how much they like to evaluate evidence and change their minds accordingly, for example, tend to be more strongly correlated with atheism. But asking people how rational they think they are is quite different from actually determining how rational they are. So what I want to talk about here is, is our um, predisposition for post hoc rationalizing. So post hoc rationalizing is when you intuitively come to a position and then rationalize that position after the fact. And I think so. I th- I think this is important to look at, uh, and I wonder whether there's some interesting work that can be done there. So whether r- religious people do more post hoc rationalizing. So everyone here is being rational, but what part does a rationality play? So if someone intuitively comes to religion or psychosocially comes to religion and then spends the rest of their life rationalizing that you can say they can say look i am rational i am being rational this is me rationalizing my religious belief but does it rationalize how they actually got to that belief sorry does it explain how they got to that belief did they use rationality to get there and and that's the important move isn't it 
Uh, but then you could say, well, do relig- do non-religious people actually, you know, post hoc rationalize? Do you give up religion because I don't know you got divorced, or because uh, and it didn't work with your theology, or because you saw your family died in uh, of malaria or in a tsunami, and you like, how could God do this? And do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, but they could be rational arguments. Are they rational or were they intuitive arguments? And then do you then post hoc rationalize your atheism? How much does that happen? So I think there's there's more work to be done in trying to unpick what is going on in the actual process of ascribing to a belief, whether it be theism or atheism, right? And uh, and I use belief there because I think athe- I'm a strong atheist, so I believe atheism is a belief. It's a belief that God does not exist. It's not a lack of beliefs. I don't just lack a belief in God. Like, I'm literally telling you, God doesn't exist. But anyone that says, comes to you and says, I don't think God exists, doesn't lack a belief. They are, they are giving you a, a positive belief in the non-existence of God. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, uh, but uh, so I, I think there is certainly some unpicking to be done here i mean it's definitely very interesting and and looks like you know many atheists need to take a long hard look at the their if they ascribe to the claim that that you know atheism is is rational or, or atheists are more rational then this is this is arguably not correct but is that rationality that theists using more of a post hoc rationalization or do they do they rationalize to their belief and i think that's the i don't know whether that's been looked at here i don't maybe maybe i'm wrong but uh, you know it's one thing to say here's a religious person and they are rational but it's very different to say here's a religious person and they arrived at this position by being rational not that they arrived at this position by being intuitive and then rationalizing that position after the fact, post hoc rationalizing. Because if you get more people rationally moving towards atheism, like changing their beliefs based on rationalism, on rationality, sorry, then that's that's a slightly different scenario. Um, and and I guess I, I I'm looking forward at some point to um, to interviewing Will Gervais and and this will certainly be something I, I talk about in that anyway let me know what you think uh the, hopefully this was interesting to you and um uh thank you for hanging out uh as I always say please question everything particularly yourselves